So we're at a store that's called uh, Tore Capital, produced by Edon. Edon, I'm pretty sure, is like a chain department store here in Japan. So maybe this is just them diversifying into Pokemon cards, or cards in general. They've got Pokemon, they've got One Piece, they've got Yu-Gi-Oh, they've got everything. Hey, what's going on, man? Um, this store's not bad. There's a lot of cards here, like a lot. Uh, this is the damaged cabinet, so all the cards here got a bit of damage on them, but I think everything here has some degree of damage on it, and the prices like fluctuate massively because of that. So some cool stuff here. You know, there's some old Full Art Supporter cards. There's a Kyogre that looks really cheap, um, but it's already been checked out, it's pretty damaged. But it's crazy here. This is like a lot of different cards, um, but the price is just kind of like all over the place. So I think it's worth checking out. It's very loud. This is one of the few stores where I'm able to like actually do a little bit of narration while walking around because it doesn't seem like they're playing licensed music, but yeah. I mean, I'll let all the card prices do the speaker for themselves in this one. You can see... That's pretty cool, there's like a show in there, but the red sticker means it's got like a large amount of damage on it, so... You know, it's just... This is the thing, when you go to like so many different card stores in Japan, and you're just like spamming them, and you're seeing so many different prices, you kind of get desensitized. You, you realize that there's like a lot of stuff around, like there are cards everywhere. It's not like... It's... Oh, how do I even explain? Like it's hard to even explain this. Like, there's a lot of cards everywhere, but then there's like... They might not have the exact card that you're looking for in the store, on the shelf. But if you're keeping your options open, like if you're coming shopping for stuff, but you're not being like ultra picky, you're not being like ultra specific about what it is that you're buying, like you're gonna be able to walk away with like a bunch of cool cards. But if you're coming to find like specifically one card, that's when it starts to get like depressing and then you're just like, you know what, maybe I should just like go do something else. Because hunting for one specific card at all these different card stores is hard. Because um, you're like, you're trying to find like a diamond in the rock. Well, not only are you actually like trying to find the card, but you're trying to find it in like good condition and then you're gonna make a decision whether you wanna actually pay that or not. And obviously with like the advent of online shopping, um, well, I mean, it gets hard to like justify spending all that money on a card that's probably damaged. I mean, you can probably go online and find it graded for less. I think hanging out with Steve, learning a little bit more about what Steve does, um, Pokemon Steven, if you guys don't know, Steve from Australia, like learning what he does and like his thought process behind buying and grading, you start to like appreciate that a little bit more. So. If you get caught up like trying to find one specific card in perfect condition, I think you're just gonna go crazy. And you're gonna, it's gonna be easier for you to just like buy it online. Whether that's like in Japan or, or um, from eBay in your local country or Zen market or whatever, right? Wherever you buy a card. But I guess if you're coming here to like have fun looking at like, how many cool cards there are, of which there are a lot, like there are a lot of cards you can see, um, then you'll be fine, you know. Just don't, don't set your heights too high, don't set your expectations too high, you know what I mean? It's all just expectation versus reality here. It was definitely much better in August, I'm gonna say that much. Maybe that's because people were selling more, maybe people are not selling now, maybe they're, they're not selling the car stores because car stores aren't offering crazy prices, and maybe that's a big part of it too, because car stores were offering like ludicrous prices where it was like very hard to resist selling, period. Um, it would arguably almost be like, it would have been silly if you didn't sell, right? Because I'm like, probably one of the most reluctant collectors when it comes to selling. Like, I never want to sell anything. But even I was selling stuff in order. And I was selling after the peak too. So like, if you're thinking about like, May, June, July, where it was actually going like full tropo, um, you can see why like, there were so many cool cards in the stores on the shelves, because people were like, all right, well, these are in good condition, I'm gonna make a lot of money, so it's time to sell. But now where we're in this like dead period where it's like, well, I don't really want to sell the card stores because they're not really offering high buy prices. You know, we laugh at like Margie, whenever Margie was like offering crazy high buy prices. Well now they're not doing that anymore. People aren't selling, so the good condition cards aren't in the shelves anymore. So it's like a good and a bad thing. But I think those kind of sellers are now just moving to just selling stuff online um, because maybe people are just paying more or it's easier, or they get, well yeah, because they're probably paying more online than what a card store is willing to pay because a card store can't buy your card off you for a lot of money um, because then they have to struggle to sell it and their margins are too thin.
Whereas if you're just selling independently, it's a bit easier. There's just like one theory. Maybe that's just like one theory as to why things are the way they are now. But you can see there's like no shortage of cards. And the cool thing about this store, one thing I like about this store, even though the prices are all over the place and there's like a lot of damaged cards, is that there are just like a lot of cards. Like you'd rather walk into a store that has cards like this on the shelf, with flaring on there, 11,000, but it's probably damaged because everything here is kind of damaged. You'd rather walk into a store and there'd be like a lot of cards to look at. For me, it's a bit hard because I'm, I'm like doing what I was saying is like not a good idea. I'm like trying to find specific cards, which is both good and bad. When I don't find them, I'm just like, man, what am I doing? Should I just like do this challenge on eBay <laughs> from my desk? The whole point of coming here was because I didn't want to do challenges that felt fabricated. This is like, it's not even like a challenge. It's like a, can you do it? Like what, <laughs> what actually is the out? Like, what is the reality of trying to do what I'm trying to do here? Um, this is one of like the videos that I'm making here. So I'm like alluding to what it's about without going too far into it. But when you come into stores and you're not finding anything, you're just like, man, what am I doing? Then when you do find a card for, the, for what you're trying to like complete, but then you feel like you pay too much. You're just like, man, I just got owned. But it's like, pick one. Do you want to find the card or do you want to pay too much? And what is too much also? Like, define too much. I think I'm just annoyed that that rabbit ash has a bit of damage on it still. But yeah, this is what's like mostly going on in here. There's cool Blastoise is there. That must be really damaged for it to have such a varying price. That is slightly damaged. Yeah, the green sticker means slightly damaged. Still 18,000. If you're after buying a copy, it's as close as you're gonna get. Steve reckons that these are like incorrectly priced. But maybe they're not, I don't know. You have to look it up. Go around the corner. There's Blendy. It's going on Blendy. He's buying some stuff. Um, oh, a whole bunch of full arts here. This is actually kind of cool. It's like how many full arts are here. But if I just like stand back here. Whoosh. So one, two, three, and four are just like full of full art trainers. Uh, the full arts are rainbows. For the most part. I think these top two. Let's say these top two. And then a little bit of that one. Top two. And a little bit of that one. And there's all playables here. And then it's One Piece. And that seems to be a thing too. We do like a cool cinematic. Well, actually, no, this was cool. I didn't zoom in on this. Some old uh, full art trainers here. Are you guys wrapping up? Okay. Well, it sounds like we're done here, so... Let's just get the last little bit of footage here. I think that's it. I just want to get the Pokemon Center ladies. But that's about it. It's a vibe, I'll tell you that much, it's a vibe. At the very least, the vibe is there. But let's move on to the next store in Kyoto.